وقل رب زدني علما إن الحمد لله تعالى نحمده وأستعينه وأستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وزد وبارك عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وأتباعه وأزواجه وآل بيته وذريته وعلى من سار على نهجه إلى يوم الدين ثم الوصية عباد الله تقوى الله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا وبعد فإن أصدق الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدى هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد رمضان من العادة إلى العبادة This should be the theme of and your goal for this period of time before Ramadan start that we change Ramadan from being a tradition practice a customary thing that you do every year to an act of worship one of the biggest ibadat that an individual does after Salah is Siyam a renewal of connection between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not a month to eat and drink or to spend extra time it is a month to fulfill the requirement of the ibadah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala require from all of us we all use phones and computers and the like when the battery drops low we run to recharge it. We want to make sure that it has full battery on. Allah made that recharge and He has divided upon times. So every day you recharge your heart, which is more important than your phone, by the five prayers. خمس صلوات في اليوم والليلة قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الصلاة إلى الصلاة the recharge here of the heart that when you come to the prayers between each prayer you fulfill Allah will forgive your sins and then after the week is done you come to recharge your heart by fulfilling the ibadah of the congregation of Jumu'ah or Friday which again, not the topic of today, but it became more of a custom and a tradition than an act of worship. If you saw how the Prophet ﷺ and the Salaf and those who came before us took care of Friday, how they prepared for it, physically, mentally, emotionally, everything. How they came early to the masjid, how they recited Surah Al-Kahf, how they dressed properly, how they took a shower, perfumed their body, how they made sure that they are ready for this Jumu'ah because it is the celebration, the recharge of every week. Al-Jumu'atu ila al-Jumu'ati mukaffiratun lima baynahun. From Jumu'ah to Jumu'ah, when you establish both Jumu'ah correctly, then Allah will forgive the sins in between. So you have daily, you have weekly that goes through the entire year. And then at the end, 
you have Ramadan, which is 30 days of fully recharging your heart battery to continue on for the next year. 30 days of ibadah, you devote yourself for Quran, Salah, remembrance, fasting, taraweeh, sadaqat, recitation of Quran, adhkar, whatever the case might be. So we have to move Ramadan from the area of being there every year that I have to do it to being ready to prepare for Ramadan and wait for it. That's why the Sahaba, when you hear this statement, you understand how they lived it. They would, <coughs> they would prepare six months for the month of Ramadan, six months ahead. They're doing preparation. And then the farewell after Ramadan is also six months. They're feeling bad that they left Ramadan. They feel they didn't get enough. So six months, six months, that's the entire year. So their year was Ramadan. So it wasn't a surprise for them to start off any form of ibadah at a level of energy that we don't get till the 15th or 16th or 17th or 18th or the end of Ramadan. They got it from day one. Why? Because they are, they're being practicing. And that's what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam explained to us on that, and on that charge part. He said, مَنْ صَامَ رَمَضَانَ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا وَمَنْ قَامَ رَمَضَانَ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا You fulfill these two. Whoever establishes the fasting of the month of Ramadan with two conditions and whoever prays the night qiyam to stand up at night the ulama says the best of standing at night, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned in all the hadith, is to stand up reciting in prayers. And that is that that in reality only happens in the month of Ramadan. Or let's say to, to most of people. So the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever prays, whoever fasts, and whoever prays the month of Ramadan, imanan. Not customs, not because you're used to it, not because you have to, and therefore everybody's doing it, you'll just do it. No, imanan. You have to have a belief in your heart that this is an obligation to fulfill, requirement upon you, and you will get the reward out of it. Imanan. Wahtisaban, and you only seek the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it. Fasting is the only ibadah that it is very rare, almost never, that show off gets involved. Very hard to show off with fasting. Easy to do it with salah, zakah, and, and the like. Okay? But fasting, most likely, it will be hard to, to fulfill. So the Prophet said, Imanan wahtisaban. What is the reward? Lahu ma taqaddama min dhanbi. Your sins are expiated they're forgiven the month of Ramadan is the month that you seek mercy forgiveness repentance acceptance it is the month of Quran it is the month of adding on more to your good action it is the month to come closer to Allah and the possibility of the heart being attached to the ibadah is higher than any other time. And if your heart gets connected, inshallah, it will stay connected. You start your service in Ramadan. Okay? And then service could get cut off sometime. But at least there's service. The service is there. You establish it in the month of Ramadan to push you forward for the rest of the year. Ramadan, brothers and sisters, truly is the greatest blessing that almost every Muslim witness in a sense that they're able to fulfill it, especially in congregation. <coughs> so the first most important thing to prepare for Ramadan 
that we always focus on before the month of Ramadan. And this is per Muslim. No one is excluded out of this. Regardless of who you are, how religious or non-religious you practice, regardless of your good actions or your evil actions, you need this. Purification, purification before beautification. If you go into a messy house, dirty, there's dust all over. Everything is everywhere. No one ever thinks to decorate the house first. The first thing that comes to your mind is we have to clean that off. Decoration will come. Even without decoration, you still need to clean off the house, to live in it. Now that trust that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Kallabal rana ala qulubihim. That dust that comes upon our heart for one year before we fill in that heart with good actions, with salah, with fasting, with ibadat, which we will do anyway in Ramadan. But the problem is, we're doing it and the heart is still not cleaned. We have not purified the heart. So what's going to happen? The actions are going to go in, they're going to get dirty, they're going to get covered up with dust, then we don't get a benefit of it. Same thing, you get a bottle that has dust in it. You're not going to fill it with pure water. You're not going to fill it with Zamzam water, the best water on earth. Why? Because that bottle is not clean. So what do we need to do? Purify it. We have to clean it off. So whatever we pour in there, we're able to benefit from, not just throw it to waste. That's what happens in the month of Ramadan. And that's why this preparation has to start off early. And the first most important is true repentance upon any action that displeases Allah. So somebody is going to say now, if he's going to talk about tawbah, Alhamdulillah, I'm a good Muslim. So he's talking to the people who commit evil or sins. That's not true. First, you have to understand that it's a command upon every Muslim to repent. I'm not going to say yearly, daily. قال الله عز وجل وتوبوا إلى الله جميعا أيها المؤمنون. He said, "O you who believe, you need to do what." He didn't say, "Please repent." Try to. He said, "You must all repent." And the one to repent first, and I'm going to start with, just that nobody says I pick on anybody. I'm going to start with the ones who think that they're the most religious first. If you think you got it, alhamdulillah, I'm good. You know, I'm, I'm doing stuff that are great. I'm a good Muslim. I come to the masjid. I pray. I read Quran. Allah said to his Prophet sallallahu He says, don't hold the favor against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, mashallah, I am I'm the best. You're the first that needs to renew that repentance in your heart. Repentance of liking your own actions that you think you have enough to survive. No, there is never enough. Don't, don't, don't think of yourself as being the best, but hope in your heart that Allah would accept you as being the best. So you add more to your actions. You increase your actions that you make it better than the way it was before. So. Understand before Ramadan that every action is counted for you or against you. Every action. You will see it in the Day of Judgment. For you or against you. قال الله عز وجل وَأَنْ لَيْسَ لِلْإِنسَانِ إِلَّا مَا سَعَى وَأَنَّ سَعْيَهُ سَوْفَ يُرَى ثُمَّ يُجْزَاهُ الْجَزَاءَ الْأَوْفَى Every person will be seeing his actions in the day of judgment. 
you'll be seeing it with your own eyes. But the problem is, you will not speak of it. You're not going to say, I did this on that day, and I did this on that day. I'm sorry for doing this. No. Every action will be presented to you by Allah. Allah will be the one telling you, you did this on that day. Remember you did this on that day. Remember you have done that on this day. And then that's, that's, that's in itself is a punishment. You'll be seeing it. You look at it. But you won't speak of it. It will be spoken to you of it. Allah will tell you, this is what you did. And then what? Imma jannatun aw nar. There is paradise or hellfire. You end up in, in one of the two. Based upon that action. So the first is to repent. Repent from four things. And I'll just mention them briefly, inshallah. Maybe more detail on actions on next Jummah for the time being. Number one, you repent from ذَنْبٌ نَهَاكَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ عَنْهُ فَاقْتَرَفْتَ The first most important is that you repent, you leave off a sin or you ask for forgiveness for a sin that Allah has forbidden upon you and you have committed that action. Whether it's you looked at something, you seen something, you talked of something, you went out with someone, you did this, you did that, whatever the sin might be. Something Allah said, don't do it, and you did it. That is the sin that you need to repent from. A sin that you are commanded not to do, and you commit it. You fall into it. You have to repent from it. Number two, repent from what? You repent from a command that Allah commanded you to do, and you did not fulfill. That a tawbah to min amrin amarak Allah Azza wa Jalla bih, falam tam tathri. Like Allah told you, don't drink alcohol, okay? And the person fall into drinking, they have to repent. Type Allah command you to pray, but you did not pray, you have to repent. So an action that Allah told you not to do and you did, or an action that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala told you to do and you did not do. Two. Number three. A command that Allah commanded you to do and you did not fulfill it right. That needs repentance. So Allah said to pray, you say, Alhamdulillah, I pray. Yes, but your, your, your four rak'ah is in one minute. You're rushing with your salah. Okay? Then you're not, you're not fulfilling. You, you're not giving, you're not doing it with ihsan. Ihsan means what? That you're watching, that you know that Allah is watching over you. So imagine, as is in a, one example, salah. Imagine if your salah is like this, Allahu Akbar, and you're thinking in your mind that Allah is watching me now, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give me a grade for this salah. How would you fulfill that salah? So doing the action is a good thing, but doing it with ihsan is a better thing. Doing it, watching over Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching over you will change your life. So it doesn't matter what people say or think. As long as you're pleasing Allah. So you need to repent from that. Not fulfilling the action appropriately. Fasting Ramadan. We fast Ramadan. Yes, we do fast Ramadan. Alhamdulillah. But alhamdulillah, brother, I waste my day on, on social media. I fast Ramadan, but I backbite. I fast Ramadan, but I'm not wearing hijab. I fast Ramadan, but we, we, we socialize to waste time till Maghrib time so we could go to the masjid and break our fast. I fast Ramadan, but I don't have a problem saying foolish words. I fast Ramadan, but I don't have a problem watching things that is inappropriate on my phone. I fast Ramadan, but I don't have a problem lying or, or speaking of evil or cursing or cussing. I don't have a problem with that, but I fast Ramadan. That's, that needs a repentance. You're doing the action, but you're not fulfilling it with ihsan. Number four, repentance from returning to an action that you already repented from, which is one of the worst cases. Repenting after repentance. You left it off. You decided to break up. 
If, that, if that's not meant to you, just pass it on. You decided to break up. But then after a month, a text is not a problem. You call again one more time. Just go out for the last time. You're, you're returning to the same sin that you have repented or left off. You promise, I'm not going to do it again. Whatever I was doing on this thing right here, that was haram to do or wrong to do, I'm going to stop. Then after a week or two or three, you're back on it. Renew the repentance. You have to redo it again. For all of this is to do what? All of this is to lead to one thing, to have the pleasure and the full taste and the sweetness of Iman and faith of the month of Ramadan to get to collect the fruit out of it so our heart will be pure, clean, to accept what's coming as new. If we add on purified to non-purified, they will mix up. And then we return back by saying, we didn't get anything of Ramadan. Ramadan is not the problem. Ramadan is an opportunity and our hearts might be the ones that are going through some difficulties.